So Adam, I want to ask you a question as we talk about First and Second Samuel. Um, it looks like at the beginning of Israel's life with God um, that things are pretty simple. Uh, the social setup is God is the king. Um, sometimes he's got some spokespeople, some people who do some judgments and things like that, who tell people what God thinks. Right. But God's the king, Israel's his people, case closed. It's nice, it's neat, I get it. Um, somewhere along the line, in fact, in First and Second Samuel, uh, Israel gets a king. Um, eventually, it turns out that this king uh, down the line is going to be David, and eventually it's going to be Jesus. So it sounds like God is saying, I want to be your king. I don't want to give you a human king. It's a bad idea. And then, oh, eventually I'm going to give you my son, Jesus, to be your king. So uh, what do we do with this? Is this whole kingship idea for God's people, is it a good idea or a bad idea? Or what do you make of that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, God clearly seems to think this is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. right, what you're doing here is going to make a mess. Um, kings are going to um, want and demand all sorts of things. They're going to be disastrous for your nation. There will be all sorts of bad implications. And yet, all sorts of good will come out of this. We have the building of the temple, and, and in the whole, the whole lineage, we have Christ coming from that. Christ is, in many ways, a king. All of that's good stuff, but somehow the people willed it in a bad way that, that God sees and recognizes as destructive and yet allows for his people nonetheless. Hmm. Why, why did they want a king? Jealousy. Other nations, we want to be like the other nations. They lead them out in battle and they do great things. We want that. Um, and, and God seems to say, well, all right, if that's what you want. I mean, Israel had done pretty well without a king. Not too shabby. Well, not so badly uh, in the book of Judges. I just taught that yesterday. And, uh, and you just see a, 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 there's a cycle of, a uh, familiar cycle of uh, disobedience and, and been taking over by foreign enemies. And it's not just a cycle, it's a downward spiral. It gets worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And they say, uh, the Judges has this kind of refrain in the last several chapters. Uh, there was no king in Israel, and everybody did what was right in his own eyes. And he says this was this was no good. Is the is the idea of judges? And maybe I would even even when you come over to uh, Samuel, there's uh, there's a strong sense of. Um, a king is what people are longing for. When Hannah uh, gives her beautiful song of rejoicing over what God's done for her, she ends it up with saying, and my son is going to be standing before God's anointed. And you think, wow, the, the anointed, the Messiah is coming. He's going to rule over. So that hope and expectation is raised even in the book. I, I mean, earlier, it's in the prophecy of Balaam. It's in the prophecy of, of uh, Jacob about Judah that there's going to be a king. This is God's good intention. So the it it makes it more of a puzzle why the specific request for the king uh, is treated as, uh, God says, a rejection of his kingship. Right. And would you, back to that point in Judges, it, there was no king and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Is Judges inclining us to, to see a causal connection here that the lack of a centralized office of leadership mm -hmm. meant that people were sort of they're just doing all sorts of things? Yes, though, you know, you wonder when Judges was written, it probably when there was a king. And so they, they probably have some awareness of people are still doing what's right in their own eyes. And also it, you think about what kind of king would you need? Well, you'd need one that teaches people to do what's right in God's eyes, that reminds them of the law, let's say. So is the problem that Israel wanted a king at all? Is it that they didn't get uh, the... They, they didn't understand some kind of separation of powers was going to be needed. They didn't understand the implications of kings who fell short of God's character. It does seem, I mean, that's, that's a great, that's a question that you're wrestling with all through the book. It does seem to be something of, of uh, timing, you know, uh, God was going to give Moses water from the rock, but he, mm -hmm. to strike the rock, there was something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be a motivation of uh, what they were looking for in a king. Uh, and the the bottom line is that uh, the way that they ask for it, uh, God reads as a rejection of his own kingship. But when you come to someone like David, he says, my kingship is not a rejection, it's a reflection of God's kingship. What, what is it about David? Now, so here, here's an interesting guy, because, um, I mean, David's a hero. This is this is the forerunner of Christ in so many ways. This, this, if you're looking for a good king, the short list has got David at the top. Um, 
but he does some horrible things. He's a good king for about five chapters. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a mess. And in fact, he does some horrible things. As a, as a result of the horrible things, the rest of his uh, reign is fraught with difficulty. Mm-hmm. So um, is it wrong to read him as a good king or what makes him a good king even in light of all this other stuff? So I'm curious about this. Would it be fair to say that in some capacity he's functioning as a judge in the first part as he's building up towards kingship? And then when he and, does... And what makes a judge? Say a little more about that. <clears throat> he's, um, he's just a hero leading his people, bringing some order, fighting, the, fighting the, the, the battles that need to be fought. He's being clearly directed by the king, God, so that he's not playing uh, that capacity, playing a role of that capacity. And so he's just leading the people as is necessary in a clear kind of role of submission. Okay. And so he's just the hero. It's all, it's all good. Yeah. He becomes king, and that's good for just a tiny little bit, and then... Boom. So that, that makes me wonder if kingship has something to do with, um, with a power which is too much, which is just too much for us to handle. So even though God is going to use it in a good way, God doesn't want it for his people because his people just can't handle it. You don't see anyone that stays a good king. That it, yeah. Even with David, you just get a few chapters and then it starts falling apart. I'm not sure that it, I would agree with the, the good and bad uh, dichotomy. Uh, definitely after a few chapters of things going mm-hmm. swell, uh, things take a, a nosedive and it's because of uh, David's immoral decisions. And yet there's something about him through the whole, through the, whole uh, the way that he responds when he's confronted with his sin, okay. uh, the way that he, uh, uh, the, the deep humanity that you see in him as he grieves over his son Absalom, the faithfulness that he shows to Mephibosheth, there's something uh, that, that makes him a good king even despite uh, his bad decisions and the terrible consequences that they have not only in his life but for the long term in his country. Mm-hmm. So it's almost the response to, I mean, I, I think we, we tend to think of egregious public sin like adultery and plotting someone's murder mm-hmm. as the sort of thing that makes the man that unmakes the man. Mm-hmm. I think, Joe, what I'm hearing from you is even though there's a litany of consequences that are clearly laid out and they clearly roll out as a consequence of David's sin, mm-hmm. nevertheless, the measure of David is taken with reference to um, his being a man after God's own heart, which I take would include things like his repentance mm-hmm. and his softness before the Lord's chastening. Mm-hmm. Um, so that he doesn't harden, he doesn't come undone. It actually sort of remakes him in a certain kind of way. The Tory Honors Institute at Biola University. Biblically centered, great books, liberal education. More at biola.edu slash Tory.